Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us in the fourth webinar of the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture by a Security Threats in Agriculture webinar series. Today we will be discussing the avian influenza or avian flu together with our esteemed speakers from the Bureau of Animal Industry, Fighter Rich Corporation and the Batangas Free Range Chicken. I am Joyce Gomez from PPSA, a multi-stakeholder partnership platform for agriculture catalyzed by Grow Asia and the Philippine Department of Agriculture to convene different stakeholders to share best practices and discuss different issues in agriculture and how to solve these issues together. We are currently supported by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So we will be having, we'll hear, we'll hear first from the Bureau of Animal Industry to give us a national situationer, as well as the updates and government interventions on avian flu. Then to share from the private sector perspective, we have Vitarich Corporation and the Batangas Free Range Chicken. And when all our speakers are done with their presentation, we will be having a panel discussion and Q&A, which will be moderated by Anton Palo of Foodlink Advocacy Cooperative. There you go. So with that, I will be introducing our first speaker. So Dr. Yeah. Anthony Bukad is a doctor of veterinary medicine, graduate of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and he is currently the head of the Animal Health and Welfare Division of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Animal Industry. Over to you, Dr. Bukad. You may now start your presentation. Again, good afternoon. Um, I'm Dr. Anthony Bukad, uh, head of the Animal Disease Control Section of the Animal Health and Welfare Division of the Bureau of Animal Industry. Together with me is Dr. Arlene Asteria Vitiaco the BAI focal person for avian influenza, who is also currently the section head of the veterinary epidemiology section of the division and my immediate supervisor. So I'm going to present yung uh, AI update on her behalf. So puntahan natin first yung nangyari noong March 16 or not yung in announced March March 16 is uh, a reincursion of avian influenza in a quail farm in Barangay Ulanin Pitak uh, in Haen Webesiha. The quail farm has a total population of 15,000 heads. Average age of the stock are around six months during that time. So, ito po yung location niya. Uh, based on Google Maps. Uh, if you could see, medyo nasa gitna siya ng isang community uh, in, the, in the barangay. Next po. So, case history. Bakit po ito na-report sa amin? Nagkaroon ng uh, observation yung farm owner na parang nagkakaroon ng problema sa kanyang flock. March 6, uh, yun yung natatanda niyang onset ng clinical signs, which are diarrhea, decreased feed consumption, uh, lethargy, and nasal discharge. So, more or less respiratory sign with some digestive. Um, after that, March 9, nakitaan na niya ng significant na drop sa egg production. Remember, this is a quail farm na, na ang pinoproduce niya ay quail eggs for market distribution. So, from 11,000 eggs, ang nag bumagsak yung production niya to 9,000. And on March 9, na kakita siya ng 12 mortalities, 12 heads of quail na namatay. So, March 13, four days after again, nagkaroon pa rin ng further drop ng egg production to 6,000. So from 9,000 last March 9, uh, naging 6,000 na lang ang egg production niya noong March 13. So malaki na yung ibinagsak ng production, more or less nasa 50% na from the average. And yung mortality niya from 12 noong March 9 ay umabot na ng 1,500, which is more or less 10% uh, of the farm population. And then noong March 14, naging 4,000 na lang yung egg production niya. And nagdoble overnight yung number of mortality. Next. So noong March 13, 
uh, humingi na siya ng uh, assistance from the Provincial Vet Office sa Nueva Ecija, which is represented by Dr. Jun Romero, um, who responded to the case, uh, conducted this investigation, collected samples, and submitted these samples uh, sa Regional Animal Disease Diagnostic Laboratory in Region 3 sa, may, sa San Fernando, Pampanga. So he submitted 30 live quails from the flock and these samples uh, tested positive for even influenza uh, virus type A. So as protocol, uh, our ADDL will forward the same samples that nin niran nila for confirmation sa BAI. So last March 14, uh, the samples were forwarded to be to the Bureau of Animal Industry Animal Disease Diagnostic and Reference Laboratory for confirmation and subtyping. And the samples tested positive for even influenza virus type A, subtype H5N6. So looking back at our experience last 2017, during that time, ang naging kaso din natin na na-isolate was AI type A uh, subtype H5N6. Next, please. So what were the actions taken uh, nung nireport yung case at na-confirmed? So March 14, after confirming sa lab na it is H5N6, we notified the local chief executive uh, regarding the detection or occurrence of bird flu in their jurisdiction sa, sa HN and of course yung provincial uh, government. Uh, immediate visit to the infected farm para ma-inform yung owner kung ano yung labor laboratory findings and to discuss yung protocols to be taken. And immediately on that same day, nag-conduct ng stamping out and proper disposal of the remaining birds na nandoon pa sa farm. Uh, this procedure was implemented and carried out by the regional field office ng DA sa Region 3 together with the uh, Provincial Vet Office of Nueva Ecija. After stamping out and proper disposal of the birds or, or the carcasses, of course, nagkaroon ng initial disinfection ng buong farm. So, uh, cages farm inputs and immediate surroundings of the, the farm or, or, or the building where the, the birds were housed ay agad na nag-conduct ng cleaning and disinfection. Next, please. So some pictures of the uh, culling procedures that were done uh, during that time. They, they culled or destroyed the animals, the birds, through cervical dislocation. Next. And they buried uh, yung mga dead birds doon lang sa vicinity lang din ng farm. Nagukay sila ng, ng pit hole deep enough para pag, tinabuna, pag nailagay lahat ng karkas, yung mga nasa sako, at tinabunan ay hindi siya madaling makalkal ng scavengers. Next. So what were the other activities or follow-up activities conducted aside from the population? Doon sa farm, cleaning and disinfection of the premise, cages and equipment, and all other farm inputs were conducted. And of course, in coordination with the municipal health office, there was daily monitoring of the farm workers for the next 10 days. Next, please. Uh, Information about the case. So traceback investigation, ang nadeduce doon is there were no migratory birds, no duck farms, and no body of water near the infected farm. So bakit natin siya importante? These are some of the possible sources of the virus uh, na pwedeng pagmulan sana. So dahil wala yung mga yan, ano yung possible source of infection. Ang isang tiningnan ay yung feeds na ginagamit ng quail farm. So the feeds were purchased sa Imbunya, Nueva Ecija. Imbunya is also a barangay in Nueva Ecija. 
if we go back again to the case of avian influenza 2017, yung barangay Imbu niya is one of the barangays that were affected ng H5N6. Kung matatandaan po natin, sa Pampanga, ang highlighted case was yung sa chickens. Yung index case natin ng uh, avian influenza sa Nueva Ecija ay na-detect sa quail farm. And ang isang suspicion ng source of contamination ay yung mga sako na ginagamit para sa feeds ay recycled sacks or mga recycled na sako. So possibly hindi ganun kathoro or complete yung pag-clean and disinfect ng mga sako na ginagamit ng nagbebenta ng feeds. Next please. So uh, nag-collect nag ng samples doon sa sa Imbunya from three quail farms eh um, totaling to 90 orofaryngeal swabs or yung yung laway and these samples all tested negative sa lab tapos uh, nag-collect lang din ng two batch two, two feed samples at tinest din siya sa uh, PCR and likewise the results were negative so hindi contaminated yung feeds pero yung yung sapo na pinagsususpecha na possible uh, source ng infection possibly ngang hindi properly cleaned and disinfected next we also conducted uh, a surveillance within the one kilometer quarantine area so yung one kilometer quarantine area covered uh, three barangays, of course, yung ulan in Pitak, kung saan yung index case natin ay located. And next barangay is Pinangaan and Hilera. So, on the slide shows how many farms were ang pinagkuha na ng samples, ano yung inventory nila, and ilan yung samples na kinolek uh, sa bawat barangay. So, in this case, we have a total of 150 samples or 150 birds na kinolektahan ng samples. Next, please. Um, some of the immediate uh, quarantine measures na in-implement then upon confirming na may AI sa, sa farm is establishment of quarantine checkpoints. So nakita po natin may checkpoint na in sa boundary ng Pinanggaan at sa kauna ng Pita and another checkpoint sa boundary ng Barangay Hilera and Ulanin Pita. Next. Uh, aside from the establishment of quarantine checkpoints, of course, we have to issue memo a memorandum circular, especially on this one na temporarily inhibit, uh, prohibiting yung transport ng, or movement like ng live uh, domestic and wild birds okay. and yung products and byproducts from uh, from that area so next po uh, next na in issue memorandum circular ay temporary ano din, prohibition ng pigeon racing, training or flying uh, kasi iniiwasan lang din natin na magkaroon pa ng additional uh, possible source of spread ng uh, virus. Next. So, other than that, may mga uh, nare-receive din kaming mga reports of suspect cases of AI uh, with the primary manifestation lang ng may mga sudden death, ganyan, or other clinical manifestation na uh, more or less similar to what is uh, noted with avian influenza. And these reported uh, suspect cases ay kinocoordinate po ng BI with 
the concerned LGU and regional field office counterparts, who in turn will conduct the uh, immediate disease investigation and sample collection. And as of this day, uh, wala naman pong additional uh, confirmed cases aside doon sa nangyari nung March 16. Next po. Uh, okay, uh, this one is important. Uh, the Philippines being a member of the World Organization for Animal Health, uh, we are obliged to notify the international body na meron tayong na-detect na avian influenza in the country. So last uh, March 17, uh, the BAI immediately notified OIE of the detection of H5N6 in HN Nueva Ecija. Next. So after all those things that has happened immediately, the Secretary of Agriculture, uh, Secretary William Dar, immediately informed the President regarding the detection or reoccurrence of avian influenza H5N6 in Nueva Ecija. Next. Of course, aside from the Office of the, Sec of the President, we also informed the Department of Health regarding the case, noting that avian influenza is a potential zoonotic disease. Next. Uh, BAI, through our uh, Facebook page, uh, posted AI advisories to inform the public, especially the stakeholders, with regards to the detection of avian influenza in Nueva Ecija. Next. Uh, so several advisories were issued addressing the commercial poultry farmers, game fowl uh, racers or handlers, and other poultry industry stakeholders. Next. Of course, uh, as part of our info campaign, uh, we we posted uh, material to give an idea to the public uh, kung paano nila mapoprotektahan nila yung kanilang mga poultry farms through implementation of biosecurity measures. Next po. Uh, ito po, we, meron po kaming ready material for printing ng mga uh, like this uh, brochure on avian influenza which we immediately uh, circulated again sa different uh, regional field office of BA kasi nung lumabas yung 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 information na may kaso ng avian influenza sa Nueva Ecija through the press con conducted with the secretary with secretary Dar ang immediate na hinihingi ng mga stakeholders and even our uh, government counterparts at the different levels are information materials that could be distributed to their constituents. Next. So ito po yung, yung kanina po, yun po yung harap, ito po yung likod. Uh, this is a brochure, three, uh, threefold po siya, pag pinrin. So yung regional field offices na po and some LGUs uh, took the liberty of printing the material with the template provided by the Bureau of Animal Industry. Next po. Again, some uh, advisories uh, issued or posted by the Bureau of Animal Industry for our stakeholders. Next po. So aside from uh, IEC materials, we also conducted coordination or collaboration activities with uh, both uh, government and private stakeholders. Uh, the one being presented to you is the regional in, even influenza interagency meeting uh, organized by the uh, uh, regional field office of DA in Region 3 last March 17, 2020, in attendance in this meeting are the regional counterparts, provincial and city and municipal veterinary offices, 
and agriculture representatives and some uh, private stakeholders. Next po. Uh, this meeting uh, was organized by the BAI Task Force to consult naman yung private stakeholders uh, here in Metro Manila. Kung mapapansin nyo po, March 20, nag implement na po tayo. Uh, ito po yung nasubject na tayo sa ECQ. So kahit po naka-ECQ tayo, we conduct, uh, we, we immediately organize an emergency meeting with uh, stakeholders. Kaya po, makikita nyo, medyo magkakalayo. Kaunti lang po ang nakarating. Una, kasi limited yung movement natin. So most of the participants here, are those people na nandito lang din ho sa Metro Manila but uh, they are adequately enough uh, they are adequate enough to represent yung kanilang office agency or organization where they are affiliated next other activities so next po so among the other activities that we uh, that we did is to develop a policy para ho sa magkaroon tayo ng guidelines for gratification sa pagbigay ng cash assistance to uh, HPI or highly pathogenic avian influenza affected poultry farms. Uh, this was already drafted and submitted to the BAI director for review and endorsement to the secretary. Tapos, in view of a public consultation, uh, yun pong even influenza protection program manual of procedures which was basically our uh, reference para sa lahat ng activities or protocols to be conducted once na may mga ganitong kaso. Uh, nire actually, nire-review nire na ho namin ito after ng 2017 experience natin. Kaya lamang uh, ngayon, uh, dahil hindi tayo pwedeng makapag-organize ng public consultation na physically nandito uh, kaharap, magkakaharap ang mga stakeholders, uh, sinirculate namin yung, yung working draft for their comments and review. So, next po. Uh, again, cleaning and disinfection in the affected farm has been completed. And then the, there are uh, we have proposed some assistance na pwedeng i-offer sa mga affected quail farmers, not only yung farm na, na pinagpatayan ng mga pugo, kasi uh, the mayor uh, requested some assistance para dun sa iba pang quail farmers na indirectly na apektuhan nung pagkakaroon, uh, pagkakaroon ng detection ng avian influenza H5N6 sa kanyang munisipyo. So, some of the proposed assistance would be siguro group and ship or ship uh, animal dispersal kung yung kung hindi na sila magtutuloy sa pagpupugo yung iba namang magtutuloy pa rin sa pagpupugo we have proposed uh, provision of uh, day old quails and kung because of this covid uh, incidents Diba, uh, kung maalala nyo po, isa ho sa programang ina-advocate uh, ina ni Secretary Dar is yung plant, plant, plant program. So kung mag-ship sila from, from poultry or quail production at gusto na nila mag-ship sa crops, uh, we, we, are in, we would like to find ways na makatulong sa kanila na mapasok sa mainstream program ng plant, plant, plant. Uh, advocacy ni Secretary Dar. Expo. Uh, ito pong surveillance of all duck and quail farms in the 7-kilometer quarantine area in Nueva Ecija. So particularly, uh, I, there are four barangays at the least na included. Uh, hopefully, maging maganda na yung situation ng covid uh, status ng buong Philippines para makadalaw na din po kami. Kasi kung tutusin po, itong surveillance dapat ay makonduct na po ito immediately after 
uh, finishing yung surveillance sa 1 kilometer area. Kaya lang dahil nga sa mga uh, quarantine protocols na in-implement in, in, in due to the COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, hindi mo kami makagalaw sa field. Not only kaming nasa BAI, but even yung mismong nasa locality. Kasi siyempre ang priority po muna natin during that time is to address yung issues and concerns uh, ng COVID. And then, once na matapos yung surveillance sa, sa lahat ng duck and quail farms sa 7 kilometer quarantine area, we will extend the surveillance activities sa lahat ng probinsya ng Region 3. Hopefully, all of this could be done within this month of June. Uh, at present, we are we have initiated uh, coordination again with the concerned agencies para malaman ko at on their own uh, at the local level kung kaya na ma-implement ito sana magawa na and kung magkaroon na rin ng clearance na from Manila makakapunta na rin kami sa field we will be uh, deploying teams na pwedeng tumulong din to uh, facilitate this activity immediately next po uh, once na ma-finalize yung working document na sinirculate sa stakeholders and poultry experts, uh, we, we are planning to Im immediately uh, print yung AIPP manual of procedures once na ma-finalize yung, yung document. Again, ang next pang uh, activity is sana ma-finalize na nga yung policy on the grant of cash assistance for affected farmers. And of course, ang ultimate goal natin is to de to restore yung ating AI free status, not only nationally, kumbaga, not only in the Philippines, but sana uh, internationally ma recognize na din siya para uh, we can resume, of course, yung ating ibang export uh, potentials. Next po. Uh, so again, with that, maraming salamat po for your attention. Uh, I turn over the, the floor to the facilitator. Thank you, Dr. Bukad, for your comprehensive presentation and, of course, your updates on avian flu from the Bureau of Animal Industry. Again, we appreciate your inputs and we hope that the different sectors present today will be able to support the Bureau and the poultry industry in preventing and controlling the avian influence. Again, thank you, sir. And for those who have questions for Dr. Bukad, we saw that uh, a number of participants has already sent their questions in. So you may still send them via the Q&A box and we will be reading them or as much as we can later during the panel discussion. Okay, next slide, please. So moving on to the next part of the webinar. So in the previous presentation, Dr. Buk had shared what the government is doing, what the public sector initiatives are and the plans. Now for the next hour, we will move on to the private sector perspective. So our next speaker is Dr. Reynaldo Ortega. He is a doctor of veterinary science and medicine, graduate of the Central Luzon State University, and is also a graduate of the University of Asia and the Pacific Agribusiness Executives Program. He is currently the Senior Vice President and the General Manager of Poultry and Foods Division of Fighter Rich Corporation, the first commercial feeds company in the Philippines and has been producing poultry and livestock feeds that adhere to the world quality standards since 1950. So Vita Rich was one of the first few companies that took the challenge of providing chicken products to the country's growing population through fully integrated broiler production. So as an integrated poultry producer, Vita Rich oversees every aspect of the poultry processing to sales, which our speaker today supervises and manage. With that, over to you, Dr. Ray. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Ray Ortega, head of uh, Portland and Division of Vitalis Corporation. And first of all, I would like to thank uh, Grow Asia organizer for having me here in your webinar activity. Thank you also, Joyce, for inviting me to talk about proactive approach, how to prevent even influenza or bird flu in Vitalis way of doing things. 
And to start with, I'd like to, next slide please. Uh, to start with, uh, I would like to define what biosecurity is. I, I know everybody knows, uh, majority of you, what is bio means. But uh, for those who, those people who don't know yet, the meaning of bio, bio is means life, which commonly refers to human and animal's life when we talk about these things. And security means uh, protection from harms. It is a set of measures, plans, and programs to prevent entry and spread of pests and diseases inside the farm production area. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows how the, the diseases are spread through to the following uh, objects or uh, living things or whatever materials. Number one is a vehicle. Uh, vehicle, particularly those vehicles using the in live buying of chickens that going places, uh, if the chicken came from infected farms and the owner failed to disinfect the vehicle and use again for buying to another farms, there's a strong possibility of transferring the disease. So meaning it is the one uh, or major carrier of microorganism from farm to farm. Then the water network, uh, contaminated water and water pipeline will also carry the disease through drinking water. Especially if the farm, if the, if the farm did not use chlorine or other uh, water sanitizer, you know, in Baitaritz, we always uh, plus the water lines right after a harvest of our chicken. So for chicks, uh, infected chicks come from contaminated hatchery and do also harm to other chicken. Uh, it's, it is most likely uh, the source of infection from plug to plug. And people, personnel directly working in the farms like veterinarians, technical assistants, and all farm workers have potential to carry the virus if they need to pass through regular protocol or when they uh, not pass through the, uh, to our uh, uh, security measures. And also the neighboring farms, uh, there's an infected farms close to other farms. The bodies are born in nature and has the capability to float in the air and by the wind going to another farms. And then for con contaminated poultry equipment, of course, uh, it can also be able to carry viruses and spread to all the flocks, particularly contaminated feeder lines. Animal and wild birds, specifically the, those predatory birds coming from infected country, carry the virus and contaminated farm tropical droppings. So, next slide. And this is the reason why all personnel going inside the farms will provide and cover all attire, such as farm clothes, globe, head cap, face mask, and boots. And take a look at the entrance of the farm. We always provide foot deep with disinfectant to kill the microorganism. So basically, uh, those people going in and out of the farms, visitors, delivery personnel, farm owners, has passed through this kind of procedures whenever they enter to the farm premises. Next slide, please. So just want to give you an idea how long microorganism stays in different surfaces. For example, in cotton, uh, like clothes, they survive for four days. And in, in, in every part of the body, like skin, they survive for four hours, ear four hours, a nose one day, hair three days. This is the very reason why I required all farm personnel or workers to take a bath before entering the production area. In feathers of animals, uh, microbes survive for four days, for feeds four hours, for uh, shaving of woods used in litter material. They survive eight hours, wood one day, and straw two days. That's how uh, resistant the, the viruses are. Next slide, please. So we have a level of biosecurity. Uh, in Baitaritz, before we uh, construct buildings, from the very start of farm project, we, we have a thorough 
planning for biosecurity such as site selection should be near to existing farm, not close to, the, to residential area, but uh, accessible to all vehicle for feeds and other products that will be delivered to the farms and for the uh, visitation of farm veterinarians and other uh, personnel like uh, the owners and the guests. And for structural, we need to consider farm layout. You should have perimeter pens with, uh, with clean area and with dirty area. Because the, 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 the farms divided into two area wherein the dirty area offices are located and the clean area which is the production uh, area or the farm building erected itself. So there should be drainage during rainy days and during the cleaning so that uh, whenever uh, rains goes down, it don't flood it or don't flood the area or the farm area. And then for procedural, uh, uh, this is a standard routine. This is uh, it involves the biosecurity, meaning this is the procedure that you, the batteries do whenever uh, people are coming inside of the farm. Next slide, please. So this is the picture of a classical example of uh, our biosecurity protocol. Uh, in the gate, we provide the biosecurity signage and with perimeter pens and farm gate. Uh, this farm is located in Dabo City, one of our bigger farms there. Next slide, please. So this uh, broiler farm, same thing with the breeder farm, we provide the biosecurity signage, farm gate, and concrete perimeter pens. Next slide, please. So whenever guests or uh, service vehicle of farm veterinarian or workers come inside the farm, uh, we always disinfect the, the, particularly the, the tires of the vehicles. And in some occasion, we provide a deep ramp for all vehicles coming inside to the farm. Next, next slide, please. So we also uh, place put bath upon entering premises of all every farm, uh, in either contract growing or contract beatings or our internal operation operated farms. We always put put, uh, put bath so that uh, whenever people step into the put bath and they they carry microorganism, uh, they the the disinfectant will kill the microbes. Next slide, please. So same thing. Uh, there's always put but uh, provision for every gate. Next, next slide, please. And then we also put a log book for every visitor so that uh, whenever problems arise, we have a contact tracing who will be the, or who was the personnel came inside of the farms. Just like. Uh, what happened right now in our country, uh, there's a contact tracing for COVID virus. So the same thing we applied on the uh, avian flu uh, tracing activity. Next slide, please. So this is a classical example of a, a bath, bathroom or shower room. So before you enter to the production area or the clean area, every personnel should take a bath before uh, entering to the premises. Next slide, please. So we provide also fumigation box because if the visitor carries gadgets like a uh, cell phone or camera that they want to take pictures of the farm, we fumigate and we disinfect all the gadgets that they want to bring inside to the farm. Next slide, please. So we provide our personal personal protective equipment. So look, take a look at the uh, the personnel. He has a boot, uh, arm uniforms, and in some occasion there's a head head cap. Next slide, please. So this is uh, our hatchery. This is also part of our basic biosecurity practices uh, that the employee provide personal protective equipment from uh, head to foot. Uh, there's always a uniform. Uh, whenever they enter to the hatchery, they change their clothes from their uh, uh, clothes to uniform 
Oh, actually, next slide, please. So uh, this is the stairs uh, uh, going to the building. So take a look at the foot but before you uh, proceed to the building, particularly uh, the open-sided building, you have to uh, take your foot on the deep uh, deep ramp or uh, foot deep, so that uh, if you carry microorganism, it will kills the microbes that you uh, adhere on your shoes. Next slide, please. So here the same thing: put back before entering the building. It's a different set of footwear in building because uh, uh, from building, if you want to transfer from building to building, we provide a different set of uh, boots so that uh, if there is an effect the one, we we'll carry uh, microwaves to, to, to the other building. Next slide, please. So uh, for our part of our basic biosecurity practices, we have a uh, water quality per press supply, regular plastic. So as I a while ago, whenever we uh, finish harvest, we plus the water pipelines using the scaler to loosen up all the dirt uh, adheres on the pipeline and even the viruses or microorganisms, they plus out uh, using chemical. And then pit storage condition, uh, we make it sure that our pits are properly ventilated, properly pile up, and then we, we use first in, first out, meaning uh, the aging pits will uh, give to the top person uh, late uh, the new production. And then we have also medication and vaccination program. I, un I understand everybody knew that there's no yet uh, vaccine for bird flu, but uh, we have our own uh, regular set of medication and medication program. And then, of course, we have a proper mortality disposal. In all our parts, we have mortality pit. We have an uh, incinerator that uh, dispose all the mortality, uh, of birds mortality. Next slide, please. So proper waste disposal, uh, right after harvest, we uh, dispose the chicken dung, the used litter for the breeders, and all those uh, buyers for vaccines. We have also pest control, like insect and vermin and fly control program, because uh, we understand that uh, flies also uh, become a back of every disease that we transfer to another farm. So we have a very sound and uh, effective fly control program here in Vitalis Corporation. And of course, control of other animals. Right now in central Luzon, or in the whole islands of Luzon, uh, we have 100 percent control climate uh, system building, meaning this is an enclosed type uh, building. But in besides and middle now, we have only 50 percent enclosed, 50 percent open sided. And the reason why we provide bird pooping for those uh, open sided building so that the uh, wild birds cannot uh, move inside to the farm that uh, probably will carry some microorganisms or viruses that will impact the birds or the chicken. And of course, uh, we always maintain the cleanliness of the vicinity of the farm so that uh, uh, there's no um, purposes that uh, microorganism dwell. Next slide, please. So this is the picture of one of our uh, tunnel ventilated building. Uh, this is a two-story building. If you take a look at the uh, cleanliness of the vicinity, uh, there's a cooling pad. And then, uh, uh, well, it's a very uh, presentable building for every visitor. Next slide, please. So in terms of uh, traffic control measure for people, whenever we have some guests to see our farms, uh, we always quarantine them for uh, 48 hours because we have a 48 hours rules. What's the importance of downtime? Of course, to prevent the transfer of this from one farm to another. Uh, sometimes people uh, came from infected farms and want to see some of our farms. We control their movement and quarantine them for 48 hours. Why two days downtime? Because 
bacteria was isolated or virus was isolated from one person after 28 hours through uh, some protocol that we employed, like uh, take a bath and some uh, pass into the UV lights. But uh, if we were to do so, it's very hard to isolate uh, microorganisms within 48 hours. It's like this. Next slide, please. So I just want to show the standard biosecurity measure of batteries. So if you take a look, there's a, a entrance for the dirty area. Uh, there's a provision for room to change your codes and then a changing soon and then go to the clear soon before you finally enter to the production area. So meaning uh, there's a three layers that you should pass through before you enter to our production area. The dirty soon, the changing soon, and then the clean soon. Next slide, please. So if you want to see all set of our operation, this is, we suggested always to our visitors. So this is the, what we call traffic flow. First, you, you, you visit the breeder farms, and then the hatchery, and then the broiler farms, and the dressing plant. But of course, there's a certain uh, downtime before you visit every segment of this operation. Next slide, please. So, visiting matrix. Uh, we always use this visiting matrix to our farms. Like, for example, if you want to visit uh, young plants, you have to stay 12 hours first on our quarantine area. And then if you want to go to another farm with all blocks, you, you, you need to stay another 12 hours. And if you uh, came from infected farms, represented red, you have to stay three days before going to our breeder farms and their farms. And same goes with others. So this is just to show our uh, how strict we are in accessing visitors to all our farms. Next slide, please. So this is uh, points to points to remember. So if you visit the Baitaritz farm, you start from the cleanest, the dirtiest area, from youngest to the oldest. Because uh, some of our farms, uh, the capacity is something like 10 buildings. Uh, this is not an all-in-all -all operation. Uh, for example, for 400,000 capacity, we place and we fully place those 10 buildings in one week, meaning uh, in one compound, there's a multiple age of chicken. So if you want to visit all the buildings, we start from the cleanest to the dirtiest, from youngest to the oldest. And of course, change footwear, better have separate shoes for brooding and for growing plants. The possible limit is to three pounds per day. That's our protocol. And even our own people, veterinarian, technical assistant, and even some farm workers that are farm technical services, uh, we limit them for three pounds visit a day. And of course, we have a sanitizing gel and set of clean clothes ready on their kit. Next slide, please. So, uh, self quarantine also is imposed after handling challenging farms, after administering vaccine on one farm. So just like uh, COVID-19, uh, if you're exposed to uh, farm with challenges, you have to do self quarantine before going to another farm, maybe three to four days or even uh, longer. And shower in when going to farm, especially after meeting, and of course uh, we suggest well groomed and presentable when visiting the farms. Next slide, please. So all that's include my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ray, for your presentation on how industrial growers and large scale producers like Vitarich tackle safety and protocols when it comes to prevention of animal diseases. Again, we would like to remind everyone that you may send your questions via the Q&A box and that we will be reading them later uh, after all the presenters are done. So 
for, from large-scale operations, we will now be hearing from an organization catering to a more niche market or consumer base. So next slide, please. Our next speaker is Mr. Emerson Siskar, a graduate of computer science in Adamson University, also a master in computer science in De La Salle University, and is an information security officer of De La Salle College of St. Benil. He is owner of Batangas Free Range Chicken, a farm in Santa Teresita, Batangas, with 10 years in operation focused on free range chicken egg and meat production. So the company also works closely with partner community farmers and supplies and focuses on niche market. So with that, over to you, Sir Emmer. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emerson again, and uh, I'm sorry I have a harsh voice right now, but I'll do my best to uh, explain everything clearly. And uh, I would like to thank uh, PPSA and Dr. Bukad and Dr. Ortega as well for the very comprehensive uh, presentation. Okay, so uh, we will be, I will particularly be discussing uh, our biosecurity uh, program among our farmers because aside from our own farm, we operate and uh, collaborate with community farmers uh, ever since we operate our farm. Next slide, please. Okay, our agenda will focus on three things. Uh, a, a, a basic free range chicken farming background, our farming principles, and how we prevent uh, diseases from spreading in the farm. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Okay, free range chicken, Farming is actually a method of farming husbandry where animals can roam outdoors, forage naturally, rather than being confined in enclosure for a longer period of time. Uh, for us, it, it it can be it can mean a low infrastructure cost, but sometimes can be laborious. Higher risk but promising market needs more attention than conventional poultry farming. And it does not mean organically grown. Uh, also a healthy alternative. And it offers a blue ocean market. Okay, I'll explain it to you later. Next slide, please. So what are the difference between uh, free range chicken farming versus the, the commercial? So in free range chicken farming, birds enjoy the outdoors while uh, the commercial is in confined space. The free range also have access to natural diet, while the other one is in commercial inputs. We have a possibly less infra infrastructure costs compared to the commercial uh, and higher risk of sickness than cage. Unlike in commercial production, which is mostly in controlled environment, but both have different market segments. And on our perspective, especially in the model of Batangas Free Range Chicken Farm, our business model, we create the business model in such a way that it should not meet head on, meet head on with the commercial companies as long as the way we market and the way we, we uh, sell our produce. Next slide, please. So uh, our farming principles uh, focuses on three aspects. Number one is animal welfare or the husbandry. For us, it refers to provision of adequate ventilation to the animals to prevent or control ammonia, heat stress, etc. So it also ensures proper light program, for example, how we do layers, proper equipment maintenance, and ensure sufficient clean feed and water access. I think these uh, principles are also the same how uh, the commercial companies, uh, what the commercial companies are doing, but rather on our end, we simply make it in a more, uh, in a simplified form uh, because our main objective most of the time is to, to do everything 
uh, with minimal, um, I mean, with uh, as natural as possible, I mean. Next slide, please. So second is animal health. So for us, still, strong biosecurity is, uh, should be uh, still the foundation of everything. Uh, it includes correct vaccination program, correct medications, good hygiene. But for us, for free range chicken farming, we don't do, we do vaccination program in a very minimal, in a minimum, as uh, as uh, and the basic application as well, uh, because we believe that it's based on our experience as well. It's very difficult to maintain a flock of chicken that do not actually get vaccinated at all. Well, even in the Organic Act uh, of the Philippines, vaccination is also accepted. Though, next slide, please. Number three is uh, animal nutrition. It refers to uh, balanced nutrition, feed hygiene, proper equipment maintenance, and ensure sufficient clean feed and water access as well. These were all mentioned also and tackled by Dr. Ortega in, in the latter part of his uh, presentation. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, for us, the way we do uh, biosecurity in for Batangas free range chicken, we we engage uh, the community in our production because part of our system is to, or our expansion rather, is aside from the uh, two hectare property right now that we are maintaining. As a form of expansion, we engage the community. We created a, a, a proper selection standard for uh, community and uh, household who own properties, but most of them do not ho have a regular source of income. So we created a, a we developed a criteria to establish this particular uh, farmers. If you look at it, it is something like a small time. Uh, contract grow in a way, okay. So it's it's it, it's it's coming to our realize realization as well that that biosecurity should be the first thing in place, and uh, no one is no should one be is, left behind should be, and should not be educated how important biosecurity is, okay, and and. For us, there's a standard biosecurity protocol for backyard farm, and we believe it's the cheapest and most effective means of disease control. Continuous farmer education about biosecurity and uh, about the different vectors of diseases as well. It, it's also very important to have a strong collaboration with the local government unit and a regular backyard farm audit and process improvement. Okay, next slide, please. So our basic plan plan focuses also on three main con components of uh, to preclude intro introduction and possible spread of disease, such as isolation, traffic control, and sanitation. But we developed this on our own that uh, not as comprehensive as what the commercial companies are doing or implementing because we have to adjust on a per farmer basis, what's available in the farm and uh, something like that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I would like to go to the process directly now that uh, the way we do it, we, in, uh, the, the, we are the, the actual the implementer of the process. We are the owner of the process. We are the ones who developed the process and laid it down to the barangay level and the LGU as well. So we developed the, the, the biosecurity plan and roll it out to the backyard farms in collaboration with the LGU, the barangay captains, and the local government uh, officers and the, 
And in our case in Santa Teresita, we don't have our own uh, municipal veterinary veterinarian. So most of the time, uh, it gets uh, coordinated to the provincial uh, veterinarian in our case. Uh, right now, the, the town is a third class municipality. So we have to be creative the way we do farming, especially for, for poultry, because we our one of our visions is that to make Santa Teresita the source, the major source of naturally produced eggs and chicken. Okay. So second, we conduct second step is the barangay conducts baseline inventory of all chicken farmers and updates the, the, the database wherein the farmers have to fill up the, what we call uh, BFRC as well, Backyard Farmer Registration Credential Forms. So in, in that manner, we will be able to uh, get the, the, the very baseline of who among in the community grows chicken aside from our own uh, small contract grower, okay? And then after that, the barangay or e or, or us issues backyard farm number or tag or ID so that for our uh, which will also help us in in tracing uh, our production or any problem later on uh, it contains well the next step is that for a new backyard farmer or owner they have to register their flock what no matter how many they have to the barangay uh, so that we can document things for them. Okay, so that's very important for us. A part of the process is also to record all inbound and outbound inventory of mortality or sales, uh, not exactly, not specifically how much, but uh, in particular, the number of heads that come in, the number of heads that go out of, of the community. Okay, for our uh consumption later on next slide please so uh part of the task or responsibility of backyard farm owner and the barangay and even us is to immediately report suspicious or possible flock concern why this is very important for us because when we look at uh, uh the way things spread most of the time, and in different uh, instances as well, uh, which mentioned also by Dr. Bukad earlier, is it, it, uh, some uh, contamination happen in uh, in bigger farms. Okay, so I think we have on our end we, we realize that we have to to focus on the community level, that we have to know what's inside our community who among in our community is taking care of uh what kind of flock so that we are properly informed and once we are properly informed it will be easy for us to plan and to to communicate to the government uh with proper of course supported by proper documentations and data i think that's very important and uh, second step is we have our, our farm we have our own uh, veterinarian and as i mentioned earlier we also coordinate with the municipal uh, provincial veterinary office we document and investigate concerns we take necessary photos and that's detailed in our uh, biosecurity plan whenever we we attend to incidents and in in some cases we don't we don't just uh, take photos. We don't ask the community or the backyard farm to simply take photo and submit to us. But we personally look at the of the mortality if there there is some, there is mortality, and uh, okay. We also follow isolation isolation and treatment procedure for confirmed case of infection or problem. Uh, so far. Uh, in the in almost 10 years of operation uh, or, or rather five years of operation with the community we never had a single incident of a very high mortality that involves um, like 
uh, Newcastle disease concern or similar. And then in such a case, whenever we, we isolate something, because we also send uh, samples to the controls, quality control center uh, in our area to determine what are the, the, the possible infection. And then we report them also from time to time to, to the provincial office. So in, in a way, this is how we develop our uh, biosecurity control as a whole, as a whole. And I just cannot detail the, the very detail of our biosecurity plan, but we can always share it to, to people. And because we believe that once we were able to capture and uh, uh, get the process going, this is something that can be adapted by other barangays as well. And until the town gets to have a standard uh, biosecurity program for every barangay, that is going to be monitored by the municipal veterinarian, veterinarian or in case of its absence, the provincial veterinary office. Because our assumption is that uh, I believe in our case, not all the time, the provincial office can immediately send uh, somebody to check on this kind of incident and all. And we feel that we cannot afford that this gets neglected. Okay, so that's why this is something that we really take time to to uh, roll out to every farmer, whether they are our own farmer or small farmers in the town. So that's how we we uh, we do our program in the town of Santa Teresita. Next slide, please. And lastly, part, as part of the process, we believe that uh, a regular audit should be done from our end or end the barangay level just to ensure the, the, the credibility of the, of the plan, of the, pro, of the process. So we need to devise our own audit plan from time to time. We need to, together with the barangay, we need to conduct a random audit process. Uh, for documents and procedures if these things are being followed. We need to prepare audit report findings and recommendations so that we can implement recommendations and monitor them later on. I think this is very important for everybody because uh, this will ensure sustainability of the process and the plan as well. And little by little through continuous improvement, maybe this can be adopted by every barangay in our town first and uh, document all best practices as well and share to many people. But uh, in, in any case, we, we don't craft or we don't develop our own because number one, I'm, not a, I'm an IT professional. I'm not a veterinarian, but we, 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 we leave things to the professionals all the time. So we make use also of all available materials from the Bureau of Animal Industry as well that we can also disseminate to our uh, backyard farmers. To date, we have uh, around 20 to 25 quality farmers in Santa Teresita whom we buy all the eggs and chicken under our uh, standards uh, while we serve our niche market as well. Um, aside from that, we have our own two hectare property uh, with our own backup production in whatever happens to the uh, production outside, this will serve and uh, to augment whatever uh, production that uh, we have to isolate in, in case there, there uh, is a concern in one, of, in one or two of, the, of our farmers. So I think this is uh, our short process, how we manage uh, and control our backyard farmers in the town. And I hope uh, this will, uh, we can even uh, improve this some in, uh, from time to time. I think uh, the rest of the slides are all other uh, sample farms and our products that you may also uh, let others to see and flash. And, uh, okay. 
This is our own farm. Sample backyard farm. Sample brooding area. Our broiler production, which we grow uh, around 80 days. Broiler production as well. In the backyard, backyard broiler. Broiler, and these are the layers. Layers. Our own products that we buy from these communities. Uh, we have the the eggs which we branded ala eggs, which we which are available in supermarkets, and we stamp all our eggs as a uh, security and protection of consumers. And our chicken. We only those are all only the products that we we develop and we buy from the community as well. So with that. Uh, thank you for having me in this webinar, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Joyce thank and you. Uh, everybody. Thank you, Sir Emmer, for your presentation as well as for sharing your experience in working with community backyard farmer partners, which is very interesting for us as PPSA and the Grow Asian Network is all about working with smallholder farmers to increase their productivity, their profitability, and this is something that maybe we can also explore with our partner farmer organizations. Again, for our participants, you may send in your questions for Sir Emerson as well as for Doc Ray via the Q&A box. Unfortunately, Dr. Bukad was called in in an emergency meeting but has agreed to answer the questions which we will be including in the final report that we will be sending you all next week. So now we move on to the panel discussion in the question and answer section of the webinar. So for this, we have invited Mr. Anton Simon Palo, value chain development expert and the general manager of Foodlink Advocacy Cooperative to moderate the session. Over to you, Anton. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, may I ask the distinguished panel panelists to show their faces? Uh, I am just like you. Uh, uh, I'm also wary about the time. We only have nine minutes, so let's be quick about our answers, I suppose. So uh, we're for Doc, Doc Ray. Um, the Vita Ridge is essentially a, uh, has, has a very impressive uh, operation with regards and from end to end, from inputs all the way to production and then perhaps even marketing. Uh, in which case, uh, the, if there was a lesson from African swine flu, it's that, uh, so, sorry, African swine fever. It's that uh, the the lack of collaboration between commercial growers and back backyard growers posed a very big problem. How can Vita Rich and perhaps the rest of the private sector uh, commercial growers uh, ensure a collaboration or come up with a collaboration with the backyard growers? Actually, actually, Vita Rich Corporation has two, has two business model. Number one model is to uh, we have a contract growing department that caters all the big customers like uh, uh, with a volume of uh, 50,000. Uh, uh, well, actually we started 10,000 up to 400 to 500,000. That's our big contract growers. Mm -hmm. And our contract growing scheme is uh, to provide them uh, the old chicks, feeds, medicine, vaccines, and technical services. But another uh, side of our business, we're also selling pigs and uh, the old to small farmers. And we have people uh, who attend their needs to teach them all things about uh, poultry management, biosecurity and everything. So there's also, you know, uh, some collaboration because uh, if uh, we have one big farm, for example, in one location, there's a small farm that our, our people uh, sold uh, small volume of doll chicks or peds, uh, we always take care of, uh, you know, the, uh, the collaboration between the two, farm, the two farms, the big and small. All right, that's great. All right, that's um, great. Uh, and over to uh, Emmer. Uh, so you mentioned that you have a that have collaboration a with the barangay. barangay. Uh, 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 Dr. 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 <laughs> Uh, Anton, sorry, there's a, a strange feedback noise coming from your mic. 
Uh, it's like a metallic sound. Perhaps you can turn it off and on as Dr. Emerson is, uh, Sir Emerson is responding. Yes, yes, yes. Now, um, so again, uh, Emer, we, you, you mentioned earlier that you have a, a very good collaboration with the barangay, and um, but this might not, this might be very good, uh, a, a situation that's very much uh, within your context. How do you, how, how, what are your tips by which to have that same level of collaboration for the other uh, free range and even um, other poultry growers in general with regards to the uh, LDUs? Uh, how do you uh, generate buy-in? Yeah, thank you, Anton. I think one has to step up because uh, there are, to date, there are so many, there are many, peop many people already who are into free range chicken farming. And we believe uh, together with Pamora Farms, uh, we, we, can, we believe that we were once of those who started early, even without, even, even before the commercial company started selling brown eggs and chicken in the market. So I think with what we have uh, set up for biosecurity in our town, one has to step up and take good consideration of uh, for biosecurity because you wouldn't know when disease would happen, right? Mm -hmm. And unlike uh, in commercial companies, we have, there are so many strong control points already because the commercial companies have all the resources that they can dispose of. While in the backyard operation, uh, medyo sabog-sabog yung ano eh, yung yung iba-iba yung model na sinusundan ng every free range chicken farms but in our case since we develop a market or an in a community it's a it's imperative for us to really uh, consolidate everybody and make everybody uh, have the same mindset and understanding of what we are doing and what we are trying to achieve kasi yun nga sabi ko nga we cannot exactly determine when diseases are going to happen and that's very important uh, uh, it's we don't want to be sur get surprised all the time so i think biosecurity is one of the cheapest that we can do and uh, implement and introduce to this kind to this uh, free range chicken farmer considering that free range chicken farming uh, is even risk, uh, at higher risk compared to cage system. Because sabi ko nga palagi eh, kung yun nga mga nakakawala na manok, namam, ah, nakakulong na manok, may namamatay. How much more these chicken who are left in the open? Di ba? So, yun lang sa amin is that, that we, as we believe dun sa natural system, is as long as the environment and the ecosystem is really clean and good, we believe that we can develop a good uh resistance din ng mga manok naman eh and uh from day one that's that's also our focus all right so maybe a question for the two of you but let's do it very quickly so sir the question is uh, affordable and um affordable activities on biosecurity that can be done by low income backyard growers so we note that for example with Vita Rich and even to a certain extent with um, Batangas Free Range, that uh, many that biosecurity would indeed take a lot of investment. What are the top two uh, activities or products that can be used in order to address biosecurity for the low-income backyard growers? Actually, we have several programs for our uh, small or backyard uh, customers. Like for example, those people uh, growing. Uh, 2,000 to 3,000 heads of the old chicks. So we always provide them a technical service for our people, uh, our veterinarian, and we make it sure that uh, uh, if ever that uh, there's a thickly populated uh, animals in the area, we arrange their placement in such a way that uh, they are close to each other. For example, um, uh, farmer one to farmer two, if the farmer one has capacity of 1,000 farmer to 2,000, we will place uh, their uh, farm together at the same time so that uh, 
if uh, happened that uh, the youngest one close to the older one, there's a strong prob probability that the younger one will uh, impact uh, uh, impact disease because you know uh, uh, all animals has developed a strong resistance to the disease. Mm. So in broilers, the common uh, problem that we encountered is the upper respiratory tract infection. So whenever the uh, broilers reach into marketable size, more often than not, they're inflicted with respiratory tract infection. So uh, this is our one of our program to place uh, all farm closer to each other at the same time. All right. So through a, through a um, like, um, like, I need mute again. I need mute. Uh, so the idea there is uh, by putting them together and, and we were able to actually address and help them um, much easier. That's coming from a more vital rich approach. How about from a more free range approach, Emmer? Uh, what are the tips that you can probably provide in terms of more affordable solutions? Please. I think uh, for us uh, and uh, the uh, one I normally look uh, basically kung ano man, whatever is available first. Like, for example, we have the government, we have the BAE and other government agencies maybe who have been the expert in developing all sorts of, you know, uh, guidelines and all. And th these things are already available. So it is very important for every farmers who are into feeding chicken farming to get information available from Bureau of Animal Industry, for example. Because I, for myself, is that, is an IT professional, uh, as I mentioned, but I know a lot how things are are, are 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 happening. Okay, and second, we have also to add. I, I think we have to invest in educating these farmers. Uh, on our end, uh, we educate them by making use of resources from the government that we don't. You know, we don't have to spend. Uh, amount of money to develop things or another. So these are already uh, available for our on, for our download or assistance from the government, and that's that should be continuous. That should be a continuous uh, process. Like for us, if we have a group of farmers, we don't stop in a week or two or a month. Now we send them information. We we met them to conduct updates, but it has to be on a regular basis. And sometimes they will realize that if some people did not follow, uh, that's the time that they realize the cause and effect of what they have done. For example, if uh, a, a written guidelines uh, were not followed and then a certain incident happened, so more or less they know the effect already. So I think number one, a very important tip is to make use of available materials and even personnel from the government who are always willing to, you know, visit and devote time to to give orientations and educate the the farmers. They just need to to approach the government. Uh, they don't have to wait for sometimes really, you know, these bodies are very busy and you don't expect them to go to your farm from time to time, but they're always there whenever you need them. Okay. All right. So it seems that uh, protocols and guidelines from the government plus uh, knowledge, know-how, and maybe even collaboration with existing farms will definitely help with biosecurity without necessarily having to invest on something new yeah. with fancy equipment. All right, very good. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I, I know there are many questions, um, but we're very much uh, Period of the time we've exceeded by five minutes. Uh, I suppose we're I'm going to have to turn it over to Joyce again. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you, our distinguished pa panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Thank you, Doc Ray, Sir Emmer. Thank you very much, as well as Doc Anthony, for a very rich discussion on the topic of avian flu. So, for those questions who were not asked during the panel discussion in the Q and A, uh, we will be answering them or the panelists and the speakers will be answering them and we will be sending it to you via our report 
uh, we will be sending it to you next week. Again, we would like to thank our speakers for their valuable insights and sharing, and we hope that these information shared by our speakers today will be helpful to our participants in preventing their emergence of avian flu in the country. And should you need to reach out to our speakers, we will be flashing their contact details in a bit. Okay. So we would like to thank, of course, our participants for your questions and your participation today. We hope that you will able to get something of value from today's session. Again, should you have additional questions, clarifications, would like to reach out to our speakers in the PPSA, our contact details are flashed on your screen. Thank you very much and keep safe everyone. Thank you.